Today we're checking out the Surface Laptop Go. This is a $550 laptop I picked up from Best Buy. I'll have links in the description to the item on Amazon, probably Best Buy as well, and wherever else I can find it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I know a lot of people who watch aren't, so if you enjoy the video or find yourself enjoying the video at any point, be sure to get subscribed, or even while you're down there, join the Discord and get chatting with the community. Uh, we chat a lot about the laptops after the video, so you know, bring up any questions there if you have any. So first we're going to talk about build quality. Um, basically first, um, when I've been using this laptop, it's been quite sturdy. And one of the sturdiest parts of this laptop, of course, is the lid. It's this nice aluminum lid here. You know, not much play in it. If I close it here, you can see that I can get this corner to touch and there's not much for a gap left in this corner here so yeah not much play there even with the magnets holding it together it stays pretty straight in general the hinges feel really good I mean you get pretty good movement out of them you can pretty much open the laptop with one finger which I know matters to a lot of people looking at more premium laptops on this channel I talk a lot about bad hinge mounting and I don't think this laptop has you know bad hinges I don't know for sure I don't have any teardowns or service manuals available, so I'm not 100% certain, but I think the hinges are probably going to be fine for long-term use. And overall, this is a nice aluminum keyboard deck. The whole laptop doesn't have a whole lot of play in it. You know, it's only a 12 and a half inch laptop, so I didn't really expect to find any. And yeah, that's my thoughts on build quality so far. Be sure to ask any questions in the comments if you have any. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the keyboard. So notably, this keyboard here is not backlit. It's just a standard chiclet style keyboard. Uh, pretty standard layout in general. Nothing too notable about it, I guess. Um, it's a pretty standard Surface laptop. We've got about a millimeter of travel in the keys. And um, it feels pretty nice. It might be a little bit more cramped than I'm used to, but in general, I didn't really have any issues with it. And keyboards are pretty much user preference, so I'd recommend going to a store and testing it before you buy one. Now let's talk about the touchpad. Um, it's pretty good. Glass feeling, it seems like. Precision touchpad for sure. Very responsive, nice to use. Didn't really have any issues. You can, you know, gesture with it if you want, whatever you want to do. Um, and the rejection works pretty well when I've uh, tested typing on this thing, so. Nothing to worry about there. Now let's talk about the screen. And I know some reviewers have kind of been giving this laptop some flack for the screen, and I don't really understand why. Um, I do know that it's under 1080p. It's not a 1080p panel by any means. Uh, but the thing is, we're on a small screen. So, you know, when a screen's like 12 and a half inches, you don't really need all those pixels. I think this thing works out to be like... Never ran into any issues seeing like the pixels independently or anything. I mean, this is just a cool graphic of my wallpaper. It's not, you know, an artifact left over from uh, the screen or anything like that. And the screen is touchscreen, so you got this nice touchscreen input. So you can, you know, you can just touch screen. I think you can do some gestures. I don't know if it has pen support. I haven't tested yet, but it might support the Surface Pen. I don't know. I haven't looked it up. I don't know what the digitizer is, but I'll do some checking during the live video and maybe in some follow-up and I'll let you know then. It's also plenty bright and I didn't really run into any backlight bleeding issues. My only real concern with this screen is the fact that these corners are rounded off. And I don't know if you noticed that, so let's let's just switch to a nice bright window here. So now you can see, um, if I zoom in, you can see the corners are rounded off at the edges. Even up here, you got curves. They're kind of there trying to match, you know, how the corners are rounded off, I suppose, and just match the overall design of the laptop. But it is a little bit disruptive of, you know, Windows design language. If we take a look here at like the start menu button, you can see we've got this box here, you know, that you're used to, but you can kind of lose your cursor in the corner. That's also one of my concerns. Like the cursor just kind of disappears, which is not especially ideal if you're trying to, you know, just get stuff done on your laptop and you kind of lose your cursor in the corner but it also just kind of mucks up the design if we look over here too you can see it just looks you know even more awkward to be honest and i don't understand why microsoft went this route and didn't do anything to explore to make it you know maybe move this over or make it wider so it doesn't look so awkward there but that's just kind of my design concern regarding the rounded off corners. Port selection is something we should talk about. Uh, this port here, we, well, this side here, we have, of course, we have a type A port, we have a USB-C port, and a 3.5 millimeter jack. I think this might have DisplayPort out. I haven't tested it yet, 
but I will be doing a live stream where I test a number of things in this laptop, so we'll find out for sure then. Um, I do know that you can charge with it, which is very nice because, you know, if you lose the surface charger that comes with the laptop, you don't have to worry about buying another one. You can just buy USB-C power supply or just use one you have and it's not a big deal. And on the other side, unfortunately, all we have here is just that surface connector. And I really do wish uh, Microsoft had went the extra mile and maybe added like an SD card slot there, maybe another type A. Uh, maybe an HDMI port instead of adding this connector because like I, I don't I don't think surface owners or really anyone looking at this $550 laptop is like man I really got to have that surface connector I think they might have benefited a bit more from a different connector but I understand if <laughs> um, there's some you know weird reason for that I don't know I think it's a bit silly now let's talk about the speakers speakers are awesome on this thing um, I don't know if it's been properly communicated to you, but the speakers are just lovely. Like, I, <laughs> using the speakers in this thing, it's like they're, like, right here inside of the keyboard, which I think they might even fire through the keyboard. I'm not 100% certain, but um, it feels like they're firing up. It's not like they're firing down, like, in a lot of laptops at this price point. And, um, yeah, it just sounds great. I measured them up to, like, 87 decibels during my test, so they get plenty, plenty loud. They're gonna be enough to let everyone <laughs> in the room know what you're listening to if they're at max volume. And you can feel the whole chassis vibrating, so it's almost as if it's using it as, like, a resonating chamber to help improve the speakers. Maybe they fire out near the vents. I'm not 100% certain yet, but... And that brings us pretty well to the performance part of the video where we're just going to talk about how <laughs> well the Surface Laptop performs. Uh, basically, I haven't run any benchmarks on the thing yet. Um, no, um, we'll go into that a little bit later, why I haven't, but uh, the thermals, I've done some testing. Really, really good thermals. Like, it actually surprised me because, you know, you look at the bottom of this laptop, there's no vents here. So, you know, a lot of people have been like, well, the thermals aren't super amazing. Uh, <laughs> they are mistaken. The thermals in this system are great. Like, if you got the high-end, like, i7 variant of this, it's going to just rip through whatever you put it through because this thing can just cool this processor down really well. Um, you get the G7, i7, 1065, whatever. You're going to have a good time playing games or doing, you know, <laughs> graphically intensive tasks in this thing. No problem for sure. For anyone who cares much about thermal statistics, it was around 20 watts indefinitely around mid 90s and it would spike up to 100 on occasion but i think it was just the paste application was a little meh on this laptop but then it drops down to about 15 watts so it's around um high 70s and low 80s so yeah uh the right side of the keyboard is actually the air intake i didn't really get to that earlier but this is where the air comes in it might also come in here i'm not 100 percent certain i don't think it does because this part of the laptop stays pretty warm um, but this laptop, this part of the laptop here, when the fans are on, it's just frigid. And I do wish that they would have designed it the other way around, where this part of the laptop would stay cooler, because that'd be nicer for more casual people that are trying to game, or just, you know, this is a more heavily traveled part of the keyboard anyway, for a number of tasks. It would have probably been better to have the fan over there, but nevertheless, this part of the laptop stays nice and chilly. I'll do more testing on that in my live stream. And I'll collect numbers on like the bottom temps and the top temps during then and then report back with like a separate thermals video Just so anyone who's curious can know and uh, yeah We're at the part of the video where I talk about the drawbacks of this laptop uh, and there are a few uh, Again, this is the $550 model. So it comes with four gigs of RAM Personally, I haven't run into an issue using that much RAM. Windows does a pretty good job of keeping its RAM usage down when you're at like only 4 gigs. Because, you know, on like a 32 gig system or 16 gig system, Windows can use like 4 gigs. But on this system, if I load up uh, Task Manager, you'll see that Windows is doing its best to keep RAM usage around 2.3, 2.2 gigs. Or at least Microsoft has tuned this particular copy of Windows that the Surface uses to run at, you know, a more manageable RAM usage for this laptop. So yeah, when I'm using like Chrome and just doing some browsing, word processing, I haven't installed Office on here yet, but I imagine word processing wouldn't be a real difficulty there. Just in general, like I don't really run into an issue with the memory on this laptop. I know a lot of people have brought up concerns like, well, is four gigs enough in 2020? Personally, if you're just trying to find like something better than a Chromebook, this right here is better than a Chromebook. <laughs> It'll do more than a Chromebook with Chromebook-like specs. So 
if you're looking for something that's kind of like that, but like really high quality, really premium feeling, kind of like the MacBook Air of Windows laptops, this would probably be the way to go, honestly. You know, premium experience, some sacrifice somewhere, but it'll get the job done. But yeah, if you're trying to use this laptop for more intensive stuff, you're probably going to need more than 4 gigs of RAM for sure, so you might have to get the better variant. Um, just keep in mind that the $200 like upgrade fee, I think it's like $150 to $200 to go to the next step up. If there's enough interest, I will return this laptop and get the you know higher spec variant. Uh, and we'll test that and I'll redo a lot of testing just specifically for that one just to see if it's, you know, up to par. And that's if you guys care. So please leave a comment and like this video if you want to see more Surface Laptop Go content. Please do because it'll indicate to me that there's a lot of interest and I will keep doing this. So outside of the RAM concern, there's the EMMC storage, 64 gigs of it. Um, and EMMC storage is just known to be slow. It can get slower over time and even slower than a hard drive at points. So, you know, keep that in mind. This is not gonna be the snappiest laptop. It does an okay job, and I think people don't give, you know, the storage enough credit in this machine, but, you know, EMMC is not the fastest thing in the world. So, again, keep that in mind. It's also not replaceable, and I don't know if the storage in here is even replaceable in the first place. I haven't been able to get this laptop open. I tried really hard but I couldn't get it open. Basically, don't tr don't try to do that until someone figures out how to do it properly. Um, I do have one concern about the hinge design, and it's just the close tolerances when you open and close the lid. Basically, if we watch here, you can see like the lid is very close to the laptop, and I'll just close it, and you can see it's very close, very close. And then it's like really close here. <laughs> so if this corner of the laptop gets dented in any way, like inward, you're going to have a tough time closing this laptop without like scraping it up or damaging it even more. So that's something to keep in mind for sure. You're going to want to be nice to this laptop because there's also a few tooling errors in my laptop. There's a specific spot on this that has a slight blemish on it. Let's see if I can get this on video again. Can I even see it? If you look very closely, you can see that there's a very small mark. But yeah, there's like just a tiny little line on the aluminum. And I thought it was worth mentioning. There's also a spot up here that if you look at the aluminum, you can see like about here that there's like a gap um, with the screen. You can see the screen there, like the top of the glass. There's like a little tooling air in the lid. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I don't know if it's intentional or not. So again, I will be doing a live stream testing of this thing probably in a few days if there's enough interest if there's not probably not but if there's enough people who want to see it i'll for sure do a live stream i'll announce it on the community page so if you want to be aware of that be sure to get subscribed and join the discord link to that is in the description and i will be posting notifications there for that uh, if you want to support the channel you can use the links in the description to check out the products and buy them if you're interested or check out the patreon or join the channel if you want to support the channel directly um, everything goes back into the channel, so I really, really appreciate it. But for now, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you later.